Twelve months ago, these reporters had evidence Jimmy Savile sexually abused children backstage at the BBC. Today, they emerged vindicated. They were right. The decision to drop their story was wrong. The report finds that our story for Newsnight was right. The decision not to run it was seriously flawed. But it was more than that. I think the decision to drop our story was a breach of our duty to the women who trusted us to reveal that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile. Last Christmas, Newsnight knew, the BBC knew that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile. We knew there'd been a police investigation, they'd taken it seriously. That the BBC failed to broadcast their report was one thing, that it also failed to pass their evidence to police was another. But the most worrying aspect uncovered by Nick Pollard's review was the complete inability of BBC management to deal with what followed. When the full force of the affair broke in October this year, the BBC's management system proved completely incapable of dealing with it. The level of chaos and confusion was even greater than was apparent at the time. Several individuals and departments were making considerable efforts to get to the truth behind the Savile story, but leadership and organisation seemed to be in short supply. Jimmy Savile was one of the BBC's biggest stars. Shortly after the Newsnight investigation was dropped, it ran Christmas tribute programmes about him instead. It was shown as a tribute to the late great Mr Pollard found no evidence the two were connected, though he did find emails dating back to 2010 raising concerns about the darker side of Jimmy and the wisdom of commissioning tributes. Having failed to broadcast their report about Jimmy Savile, a hastily rearranged Newsnight team then decided to put out this programme. Good evening, a Newsnight investigation into Which the led to a completely innocent man, Lord McAlpine, being accused of being a paedophile. Thanks very much for waiting for me. I'm going to spend some time with my family now. Please. That programme cost George Entwistle his job as Director General. He said today he was pleased to have been cleared of any involvement in the failure of the Savile investigation and not personally to blame for the journalistic failures over Lord McAlpine. But other heads have been slower to rule. Stephen Mitchell, the Deputy Director of News, resigned this morning and will retire after working his notice. Peter Rippon, the editor of Newsnight, whose decision it was to drop the Savile story, will move to another post within the corporation. Adrian Van Claveren, the controller of Radio 5 Live, who had oversight of the McAlpine allegations, is moving to another as yet unspecified role within the BBC. And Helen Bowden, the director of news at the time of the Savile investigation, will return to her job tomorrow morning. I don't accept that um, nothing has changed in terms of personnel. What I do think is that if it was as simple as simply cutting people's heads off, um, you know, it might be resolved more, rather more quickly, but I think changing the management culture is a more complicated and difficult job than that. The victims of Jimmy Savile will never have justice in the criminal sense, but what they want now is answers. Today they found out why last year's investigation was dropped, but they still want to know how he was able to get away with it for so long.